Hey guys, Crypto Dad here. Today we're going to start the installation of our super secure system. Now, in one of my previous videos, I explained to you how to download and verify the Debian 8.8 installer. So I'm going to take you to the next step from there, which will be uh, putting that installer on an, an installer media. And, and in this case, I'm going to do uh, a USB drive. So let's get started and go through everything that we need to get prepared before we do this installation. Thanks for joining me on this intro. Okay, so uh, we talked before about privacy and anonymity on the internet, and I did a video where I gave you a pretty good setup with a VPN and the Tor browser, and that's pretty good. But what we want to do is try to create a system that's going to give us uh, as much privacy and anonymity as we can possibly get. So what we're going to do is build a stealth machine. And there are a lot of factors that go into this. Uh, there's a lot of trade-offs that we can get involved in. Uh, I'm going to give you the base system, okay, the uh, foundation that you're going to build upon. How far you want to take it is completely up to you. So let's go through the things that we're going to need. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to need is a computer. Uh, it could be a laptop or a desktop. Now, I'm going to do mine a certain way. Uh, there are many ways you can achieve this, but the way that I'm going to do it is with a separate hard drive on, say, an existing computer. So in the case of the laptop, I'm going to advise you to completely remove the factory installed hard drive that came with the laptop and you're going to replace it with the uh, installer disk that we're going to use for this installation. This uh, is good for simplicity's sake uh, and also I mean if you want to get back to your original factory installed laptop all you have to do is uh, take out the hard drive that we're going to install and put back the old one and then you'll be able to boot that laptop just like it was the factory. So in other words, this is kind of a non-intrusive way to create a second computer. Now, if you want to go full court press on this thing, you might even want to buy a separate laptop, but not everybody has the money for that. So I'm just going to advise you on a, a new hard drive and, uh, and a flash drive for this. Uh, with a desktop, it can be in uh, a separate bay of your existing uh, case. So you can have this drive uh, put in a bay and installed with your stealth system, and then uh, you'll be able to dual boot back and forth. Now, the way that I like to do it, <clears throat> if you're going to install this uh, as a separate hard drive in a separate bay, you'll want to unplug the data cable of every other hard drive in your desktop system and in, in most cases it's just going to be the the factory installed drive or if you're fishing in auto you may have more than one drive i don't know but the way i like to do it during this install is take the data cable out of every other hard drive that you have in this system so that when you're running the installation it's simple you're only going to see the drive that you're working with and you're not going to make a mistake and accidentally rewrite or uh, you're not going to install the bootloader on one of your other drives. And then after everything's installed and you reconnect all of your drives, you'll access your stealth system through your BIOS. And it's fairly simple. Uh, you'll just, many BIOS have a setup feature that allows you to just pull up the boot menu uh, as you're booting up. It's usually the F8 key. Uh, and then, of course, you could always go into your system menu with the F2 or the escape or the delete key, however you get into your BIOS, and then just choose this drive as your boot. Uh, it's actually not going to be this drive. It'll be the flash drive. Okay, so uh, the next thing you're going to need is an Internet connection, okay? I'm going to recommend a wired Internet connection. You want a wired Internet connection because it's going to be fast and reliable, especially during this installation 
where you're going to be downloading a lot of software from the mirrors, okay? Because we downloaded the net install of the Debian installer in my previous video. So, wired is totally advised. You can do wireless, but I'm going to recommend a wired connection. That means connecting a cable to the network port of your laptop. Now, if your laptop doesn't have a network port connector for a cable, then I guess you'll have to go wireless, right? But almost every desktop has a network LAN port for a wire, okay? Now, you're going to need a fresh hard drive for this installation. Now, the one I'm going to be using is the Crucial 256 M4. Okay, I rec highly, highly, highly recommend a solid state drive. Okay, you can use a regular hard drive if you want to, but we're going to make this drive encrypted. Okay, this is going to be a highly secure system. And during the process of encryption, uh, I'm going to recommend that you go through the full encryption phase. It's going to encrypt the drive it could take uh, hours and hours and hours with a regular hard drive. When you use a solid state drive, it's of the order of minutes instead of hours, okay? It still will take a while. Now, the other component to our system is going to be a USB flash drive, okay? Why don't we go big on this, okay? Uh, this is a cruiser fit drive. Now, in this case today, I'm going to be using this 32 gigabyte. You really only need a four gigabyte, even two would be fine, but they're just kind of hard to find these days. And I'm going to go with the SanDisk, SanDisk Cruiser Fit because not only is it small, it's very reliable. It's a great drive, okay? Comes in this little case. Okay, we're going to use this as our key drive, okay? So the installation here is going to be an encrypted internal solid state drive and then we're going to use this as our boot drive into Debian and then after we get Debian installed we're going to move the key we're going to create a key file and move it to this guy so that this computer will not even boot unless this key drive is present so uh, this has a lot of advantages there's a couple ways you can do it but one of the advantages is it's easy to lose or destroy uh, if you become compromised, okay, and then once this key is gone, you will lose access to this drive forever, okay? Now, I don't know the capabilities of all the hackers and government agencies in the world, but from what I understand, with the encryption that we're going to be used, that we're going to be using, it could take years to recover the data, and which most people don't really have the time for, uh, even on the order of thousands of years. Okay, now uh, the last thing that we're going to need is time and patience. Okay, this is a long, drawn out process. It's not for the faint of heart. Okay, I'm going to walk you through every step of it, but you're going to need to take your time and be patient with this because it's, like I said, it's not for the faint of heart. But when you're done, you're going to have a system that is going to be uh, about as high security as you can get. Now, a lot of people that uh, will recommend uh, encrypted drives and stealth drives will talk about Tails. Now, Tails, if you want to go with Tails, that's fine, uh, but it runs from the USB drive, which has a few disadvantages. One, running from the USB drive is going to be a little bit slower than running from an internal SSD drive, actually uh, quite a bit slower. And then also, uh, you don't have a lot of room to work. And then there's the issue of uh, continuity, of being able to save <clears throat> files on your drive. Once you get this system up and running, you're going to want to do more than maybe just boot and go on the internet. You might want to download some guides or some documents and you want to save them uh, or alternate operating systems. In my case, we're going to put uh, the Hunix on there. And these... Uh, images uh, take up some room and after you've installed your uh, your virtual system where you can have multiple operating systems they're going to start to take up some room so I'm going to recommend this 256 drive you could go even higher than that actually um, and then also uh, on a computer with a lot of memory you're going to need a swap area so in the case of my computer with 32 gigs of 
RAM, the swap drive should be at least 32, and then that's going to subtract 32 from your 256. That's a nice little chunk. So I go with the bigger drive myself, and that's why I don't go with Tails. I go with the Debian with the encrypted drive. So that's the way we're going to go today. All right, and uh, let's see. I don't know how long I am on this video, but I'm going to go uh, one more thing here, and that is I'm using a uh, 64 USB Extreme drive that's USB 3.0. It's going to be a very fast drive. I'm going to use this as my installer. So let's see here. I'm going to put this puppy in. Okay, and uh, if you'll recall in the last uh, our previous video in our software folder, we downloaded the Debian 8 uh, with the sign Shasum. We did our verification, everything was fine. Here's our net install ISO. We're going to use that uh, to create our installer. Uh, we need um, Win32 Disk Imager. I'll put the link in the description. Um, I'm going to leave it to you to download and install. It's a fairly straightforward program. Okay, we're going to launch that guy. Okay, we're going to choose the image file. And that is going to be over in software in our Debian 8.8. .8. You don't see it here. So you want to go down here to file types and choose any old file type. And there it shows up. It's an ISO file. It, it is a uh, valid image. So, whoops, doggone it. What did I do that for? Okay. Um, now that we've got the image file selected, we need to write to the flash drive. So we're going to check over here. And we can see that our flash drive is uh, drive L. I actually have uh, Windows 10 on there. I'm going to overwrite that with this. Okay, so we've got drive L. You want to make sure you get the right uh, flash drive. I like I said, I, I uh, disconnected all my external USBs and took out all my flash drives. Um, so I'm, that way I don't accidentally write to the wrong drive. But this program, this WinDisk32 Win32 disk imager is very unforgiving. If you accidentally write to the wrong drive, you're in some big trouble. Okay, so I'm going to choose Write. All right, it's giving me the warning that it's going to wipe this guy out completely okay and that was pretty cool okay so that was pretty quick see that's one of the advantages of these USB 3.0 drives let's hit exit and we'll just go over here and uh, we'll check L and look at that we've got our Debian installer on there and we're all ready to go so I'll see you guys next time and we'll install this system and I'll walk you through it step by step. Let's see. So I'm going to sign off now. Uh, if you like this video, give me a like and stay with me, gang. We're going to install a super secure system that's going to give you a, a excellent amount of privacy and anonymity on the Internet. So stay with me. Give me a like or subscribe to my channel if you like it. Thanks again.